On a July morning, 1745, a small boat landed at a point down here, and a young man stepped ashore. His name was Charles Edward Stewart, son of James, the third king of England and the eighth king of Scotland. He had come to lay claim to the throne of England. He had months earlier sent out the rallying cry to the clans to come and help him in his fight for the throne of England. He was a very disappointed young man because when he stepped ashore, there was no one here to greet him. As he sadly turned to go back, he heard the faint skirl of the pipes coming from this direction. And his heart quickened because he knew it was the Camerons of Lochiel, the largest clan in the area. He knew once they came, the rest of the clans would come. And sure enough, a half an hour later from this direction came the powerful MacDonald clan. The Peabrock had been sent out and the Peabrock had been answered. Here, he raised his standard of the Stuart family, the standard of the Jacobites. And from here, he set forth and marched right through Scotland, right to 127 miles north of London in the town of Derby. There, false rumours, bad orders, misleading advice forced him into a retreat, little knowing that London was in a state of panic and George II of England had already made plans to flee to France. This tragic mistake gave England the opportunity to raise her forces to fight him. And they forced them all the way back, back to Inverness, Glengarry, Fort Augustus, right to Culloden. And there, the most glorious, romantic, and tragic event in Highland history took place. There, he suffered his most terrible defeat on the moors of Culloden. England had once again proved their superiority. The Jacobite nation was crushed, and the Highland clearances began under Cumberland. die in the fields of Culloden. 
And they came from all the glens, four thousand Highland men, to try and win the day for Bonnie Chair. But he led the lads astray, then he turned and ran away, and left them lying dead upon the lawn. We marched all day and night behind the singing pipes, a ribbon in our bonnets for its charge. Out number two to one, tired before they had begun, they bore against the muskets and the bayonets. They brave red coat cannon guns. Charlie's orders didn't come Till the ranks were cut to pieces on Cologne We marched all day and night Behind the singing pipes A ribbon in our bonnets for Miss Charlie If you tell me of the fame Of the young pretender's name I'll tell you of a man who wanted glory It's of the men who Guns, that the song should all be sung They're the ones who had the supper on Cologne We marched all day and night Behind the singing pies A ribbon in our bonnets For Prince Charlie On a rainy April morning of 1746 Right on this very spot In the highlands of Scotland at Culloden Moor Bunny Prince Charlie, the young pretender, gathered his clans together from all these valleys, and down in the hollow there, they faced the terrible might of King George's redcoats, led by a, a, a general called Cumberland. It was a very, very bad day for the Highland men, and they suffered a terrible defeat. The worst of it all was, just after the battle, there, there followed a terrible slaughter of the Highland men, of all the wounded that lay all around these fields here. And then, following that, Cumberland's troops went through the highlands and, and caused great murder all through the clans. A lot of clans left after Culloden Moor and spread themselves all the way around the world. You still find traces of them today in Newfoundland and Cape Breton and Prince Edward Island. A black day for the highland men at Culloden Moor, 1746. Should he no come back again? Will ye no come back again? Will ye no come back again? Better love ye canna be. Will ye no come back again? Sweet the love rocks no dun like. Sing one song. 